This week on Lemons Car Spotting. Hey everybody, it is Eric and it is Nick. It is Lemons Car Spotting and it's a very special trucks only week. So we're going to talk about trucks this week as though we actually know what we're talking about. <laughs> let's, let's get to we're, it. We're not Texans. We don't know what we're doing here. Yeah. All right. First up, what do we got? It is a Dodge. Wow. <laughs> it's like one of those cutaway drawings or, you know, not drawings, but like cutaway displays that you'll see at the auto show. Uh, I get the impression that this guy's like, oh, I got a little rust on my fender. Let me just cut that away and see. Oh, God, it's still it's still going. Uh, all right. I'm going to just stop and leave it as is. Yeah, I I think that's what's happening. Very cleverly left the fuel filler door there and cut around that. Uh, you know, probably a not zero chance that the uh, the Sawzall got a got a piece of it. But, you know. Once it smells yeah. like gas, you know, it's, it's probably fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, I mean, this is the most Ohio thing I've seen in quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, well, still running. So I'll give it that. Yep. The uh, the back window also left open. Uh, <laughs> you know, don't know what well, that's about. You want, you want the inside to rust at the same rate as the outside, I think. I th- I think that's right. Yeah, as a Ram 1500, I you know, again, this is the classic American vehicle problem. Is this a 2001 or is this a 2021? Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good question. We don't know. All no right. idea. Yep. Next up. Oh, ah. man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is... Uh, uh, Half truck, I suppose, is yeah. a fair uh-huh. assessment. But uh, this has to be late 70s. This is last generation Ranchero, which means it probably still has a 460 in it. With the, Hell yeah, brother. The sweet fan wheels. Uh, the color, I mean, could not possibly be better. I mean, if you were going to pick a color from the Ranchero catalog in 1979 and you chose any color except for this one, you're doing 1979 wrong. So uh, kind of amazing that it has a truck topper also uh, that fits, I guess. Yeah. It's clearly made for the 79 Ranchero, which has got to be a rare piece at this point. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, man. I don't know. I, I've always had a soft spot for these. Like the bed is clearly too tall for, you know, the car's actual belt line, but that somehow works for it. I don't know. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, car trucks, car slash trucks is, you know, it's an extinct genre, at least here. Australia is still a big deal, of course. And it's one of those things. Things that car people say, if only they were to sell that here, we would buy it. <sighs> Probably wouldn't, which is why they don't sell it here. We've sort of weirdly come full circle with the current Ford Maverick and the, what is it, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, yep. where it's a truck, arguably the Ridge Line, you could put it into that category. It's a truck that's based on a crossover SUV. It's sort of more of a unibody thing uh, as opposed to being a body on frame real pickup. So in a way, we've kind of gone back to our roots of Rancheros and El Caminos. But, you know, them being crossover vehicles, it's not the same. Like what we want to see is, you know, a Camry (laughs) with the pickup bed. Um, Well, that's not what we want to see. What people want to see is the Holden Maloo or whatever it is. (laughs) You know, V8 rear drive car truck. We don't even have rear V8 rear drive cars anymore. So I, I you know, it's it's just kind of a lost cause at this point. Um, the Ranchero is interesting in that the car that it was based on changed from generation to generation. Originally it was right. the Falcon Ranchero, then it was a Fairlane Ranchero, I believe, in the mid to late 60s. And then you had the 70s version, which was I mean, what is this? I mean, it's like a LTD or something. Yeah, I think it was an LTD and maybe the famed lost Ford, the elite for a yeah. little while. But, right. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Collect Ranchero. Collect them all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> back to Dodge. Um, 
Wow. <laughs> so it's a Dodge, what, like a D100, early 70s-ish D100, something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. With, with a very special graphics package that I am <laughs> finding hard to describe. Um, you know, it's sort of a normal-ish two-tone green and white, just in terms of the scheme, not maybe in terms of the shade of green they selected. But in the back, it's starting to turn into some <laughs> kind of a sporty, you know, either checkerboard or just offset racing stripe situation. Um, so I don't know. It it doesn't not work uh, as, as a visual idea, I'd say. I, I feel like they had the idea for the roadrunner stripe and they did like the top half. And then they're uh-huh. like, ah, that doesn't look right. We should, <laughs> we should invert that. And somehow it, <laughs> yeah. And then they did that and they're like, Oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. That doesn't look good. Um, but the rest of the truck looks awesome. I will say that. You know, I'm just noticing now, like there's some weird going on with both the roof and yeah. the, I guess that's just the B pillar, the back of the cab where like, it's got a little bit maybe of, I, I don't know. Like the, the pillar has sort of a sporty, uh, you know, curve to it that I don't think is stock on one of these, you know, it's a little stylistic extra piece. Uh, I don't know. I could be wrong. Post in the comments if this is a stock D100 roof line or if this is even a D100 at all. I mean, we're basing this on my guess of what we're even looking at. Yeah, uh, in the same way that the very first photo we looked at, we couldn't tell where it was in a 20-year range. It's right. kind of the same thing. Like the D100, uh, the swept line stuff from like the mid-60s looks fairly unique. But everything from like 19. 19- 70 to 1993 looks more or less the same to me. Yeah. Dodge truck uh-huh. wise. Yeah. Um, it's like the grill is the main way you tell the difference. And this does seem to have more of a seventies than a eighties or nineties grill, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Let us know. All right. Next up. Oh, dude. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I love these trucks. Because these are neat. Yeah. Everything about them just, I mean, it looks like the way a Jeep pickup truck should look. Uh, It's J10, I think, or J20, whatever it is. Super squared off, you know, uh, 360, I think they put in these. Um, But, you know, all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, I guess. Uh, This one, I mean, it's hard to tell the styling because it's, you know, (laughs) in a bush inside (laughs) inside of a uh, a barn. Uh But... um, Man, I, these are cool, and I would love to see more of these doing lemon stuff, even if it's just the rallies. Um, kind of a great rally platform. Well, yeah. So this truck, and and this is where you're getting into weird. Like it was, it was a Kaiser, then Jeep owned Kaiser, but then Jeep took the design and became a Jeep, so on and so forth. There's different grills and front ends. What's cool is like the big, the full size you know, wagon ear or whatever that they continued to make. I mean, God, into the early nineties, even Yeah, you can swap some of the front end pieces, if not the whole thing onto those later trucks and get this super cool sixties look. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's pretty involved <laughs> with, with all right. the stuff you have to change, but um, yeah, uh, really cool looking. Like Eric said, it's, it's, it's how a Jeep, truck should look um so yeah uh do it yeah uh i at this this is the time when jeep had like a full range of stuff you know they had like the the wrangler whatever it was called at the time cj5 i think um yeah you know they had this full range of you know normal pickup normal pickup trucks and then they had like all these crazy forward control you know swing cab kind of deals that were yep. super unique and awesome um and I don't know, just don't see that stuff anymore. Yeah, that is true. All right. Next up, 
Ah, uh, <laughs> sells a, well, for a second, I thought it was, you know, uh, you know, something exciting like an ombre. It's right. just an S10, but it's clearly a special S10. Um, it's got a stripe kit. It looks to be four wheel drive and lifted. What do they call that? The ZR2? Yeah. Um, yep. In fact, I want to say that the ZR2 is still with us. You can get a Colorado ZR2 these days, um, which adds a bunch of off road stuff. God, this is just like straight out of the like 1993 auto show. Uh, you know, this was yep. the one that was featured at the Indianapolis Auto Show in <laughs> right. February yeah. of 93. And it was the special edition. What was the Ford called that was it, that was actually just a concept? It wasn't even a package that you could get. It was like the Splash. Oh, something. no. Oh, yeah. oh, Nick, you could buy a Splash. Oh, you uh, could? Yeah. Oh, wow. My, uh, <laughs> so you know i grew up in this tiny town and my grandfather lived in the town next next to where i lived and so there was like the car dealer and you know he would get whatever he could and my grandfather wanted a ranger and the only ranger <laughs> they had was the ford ranger splash <laughs> so my 70 year old grandfather comes driving up with this red splash with you know the purple graphics all down the side oh so sweet uh i was like damn grandpa that's tight like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that thing is fresh grandpa. Uh, yeah um Th that's a good example of, and, and it sounds like there are specific circumstances in, yeah. in this case, i.e. it was the only one it they had. The but truck, I feel like that, yeah. that's, that there are several examples throughout automotive history of a car company making something for the cool hip kids and then it's only bought by old people. <laughs> like, I want to say that the Kia Soul might fall partially into that yep. category. Yep. Um, tell us in the comments the, uh, the, the Mount Rushmore of cars that were designed for hip hip cool kids and then were bought by eric's grandfather <laughs> it's pretty much it yeah i mean this 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 particular zr2 i think would be on the list as well i would say so yeah i mean fender flares probably a 4.3 uh probably an automatic graphics package the the bars on top of the bed uh this thing drove to the mall and back yeah totally no. All right, last car of the week. Oh, dude, this, <laughs> this thing rules. Oh, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of peak rural 1990s dumb right here. Um, it's got the full cab, but it still only has the two door. So it's like a cab and three quarters, I guess. I've never <laughs> seen one with that. Uh, that roof treatment almost looks aftermarket and maybe it has the swing hinge doors, but I mean, obviously I'm burying the lead here with the, uh, <laughs> the racing stripes administered all over this thing. I mean, damn, this is, this is a 10 out of 10 for me. I, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever seen this cab configuration myself either. Uh, what, uh, tell us in the comments. I mean, it's so well done that it looks like it could be factory. Um, tell us in the comments what this thing is. I mean, there was, I don't know. I, yeah, it's, um, I mean, it is like a sort of a mini version of a semi truck sleeper cab. Yeah. Um, in that, you know, there's only the two doors and it's only you that's going to be sleeping in the back of it. It's not actually for carrying passengers. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. I see it's got like the big square Ram logo next to the Dakota. And then it also says something on the door on the black stripe, which makes me think that this is like some, you know, Idaho version of Choo Choo Customs that just did <laughs> Dakotas. Um, I, I don't know. If you know in the comments, like it's probably some like super well known in a very small world person who comes yeah it's these it's it, 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 it's a, it's a yanko dakota is what it <laughs> it's, is yeah that's <laughs> it <laughs> got to be what it is all right uh well i think i drew the hoopty straw on this one uh man hard not to go with the uh the super sweet j10 you can't see at all um that's pretty well. Sh I say that, uh, you know, I forgot about what the opening was. Uh, I'm actually going to go with that. Uh, so the uh, the newest truck, 
in this uh, that is driving around with the bed that is definitely flopping around and making all kinds of horrible noise. Um, yep, there's your winner right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, the newest and arguably the worst, um, I think, is a very worthy of the hoopty yep. selection. Well, for the Lemons build, I am going to pick that uh, super sweet Kaiser Jeep, whatever it is, uh, because, yeah, I mean, we, we th- th- this is the coolest car on here. Um, you know, it's got the most barn on top of it. Uh, that notwithstanding, <laughs> you could turn it into a Lemons race car. Um, we've got a 4,200-pound weight limit. You could probably get this under that. It would look amazing with sort of a vintage NASCAR treatment. Oh, yeah steel wheels, raise white letters, all that. It would be super awesome. But a lemons build also encompasses something that you drive on a rally, something that you take to a uh, Concord of lemons. So uh, many options for this fine machine. Um, definitely the kind of car that if you posted it on the internet, everybody would say, if I were closer, I would save it. So somebody is close to this. It's in Ohio, of course. Uh, so if you're in Ohio, it is your duty to go get this and make it show up at some form of Levin's event. Yeah. No notes. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this ep- truck centric episode of lemons car spotting. Uh, we will see you next week with probably not entirely trucks. So uh, be sure you tune in. That license plate is from the Carter administration. <laughs> hey, I was technically born during the Carter administration. <laughs>